Welcome back once again to CCSD Earth Science. Today we are going to talk about the layers of the Earth. What we have for the layers of the Earth is we have the hydrosphere. The hydrosphere is about 70% of the Earth. It is the water that covers the Earth. Now, this includes things like the oceans, the lakes, the rivers, and glaciers. And I want you to know glaciers cover about 2% of the Earth's surface. They're part of that 70%. All right, so we have a big portion of the Earth covered by the hydrosphere. Next thing is the lithosphere. Well, that's the solid part of the Earth that you're literally standing on right now, okay? Um, it's also called the crust, okay? We'll talk about that more when we get to uh, plate tectonics because the crust moves around. And you guys, um, I'm sure, are well aware of that. We've talked about some of the earthquakes that have happened. Atmosphere. Atmosphere is a layer of the Earth. It's not really inside the Earth. It's some um, the air or the gases that surround the earth. That's what causes our weather and some other things that take place, but there's a lot of different pieces of the atmosphere itself. Okay. Now, moving on. For the layers of the atmosphere. The first layer of the atmosphere is the troposphere. Okay, the troposphere is the thinnest layer of the atmosphere. It's relatively thin. It's approximately seven, seven and a half miles thick. Um, but it's the lowest part of the atmosphere. It's the one that we have our head stuck in right now. Okay, that's all the air that we're breathing and the weather that we see. Okay, like I just said, it's the only one that contains oxygen and it is the only one that has weather. Okay, because all of our weather takes place in the troposphere. Okay, it contains the greatest percentage of water vapor. There is a little bit of water vapor, those really, really high clouds that on those warm summer days build up and get really, really high. Those um, go up into the stratosphere a little bit, which is the next layer of the atmosphere. We'll talk about that in a second. Now, the temperature gets cooler. You guys know this. You climb a mountain, um, you go you know, at higher elevations, and the temperature gets cooler. That's why the tops of the mountains are snow-capped okay because it's cooler at the top so that's what I put here if you could tell that's a mountain okay and it goes from on average about 15 degrees Celsius that's the Earth's average surface temperature okay all the way up to uh, or I should say down to negative 55 degrees at the top of the troposphere so it does get extremely cold okay negative 55 is a very very cold temperature colder than our winters leave it at that at least I hope. Hope we don't have winters that get that cold. All right, next layer is the stratosphere. The stratosphere um, is definitely a thicker layer of the atmosphere. It's in the ballpark of around 20 some miles thick. Um, the temperature in this one rises as you go up though because what happens is you go from that negative 55 degrees Celsius that we were at the top of the troposphere um, all the way up to zero degrees. Okay, and um, Felix Baumgartner, if you ever heard that name, he is the one that skydove. He did a skydiving attempt and he succeeded um, with Red Bull. And he did a skydiving attempt at 39 kilometers above the Earth's surface. So he was well into this very, very cold temperature here. Um, he was quite a ways into the stratosphere, close to the top of it, not exactly the top. Okay. Um, if you get a chance, type in Red Bull Stratus Jump, and um, you will find that. Type in Red Bull and then Stratos Jump, and you'll find some videos on that. And it's a very, it costs a lot of money, and Red Bull backed Felix Baumgartner to do that world record attempt. And he broke a couple world records um, in that attempt. Now, the next layer of the atmosphere is the mesosphere. The mesosphere, the temperature drops from zero degrees Celsius to negative 90 degrees Celsius. So it gets extremely cold in the mesosphere, okay? We're never up in the mesosphere. Most of our planes fly highest typically in the stratosphere. I don't think they really go up into the mesosphere much. Um, but this is a layer that protects us from the incoming meteors, okay? What happens in this layer is as a meteor comes in to that layer of the atmosphere, there's enough pressure in that atmosphere there that um, what happens is it gets crushed. And when it gets crushed, it changes energy. And that energy, when it gets crushed, turns into light, which is the streak that you're seeing go across the sky. 
Okay, so the mesosphere protects us from meteors. A lot of people think that they burn up. Um, it's not exactly accurate. Um, it's more that they get crushed when they enter the atmosphere. I used to always think that myself until I was taught otherwise. Okay, final layer of the atmosphere that we are going to talk about is the thermosphere. Well, the thermosphere is, as you can see, its temperatures range from negative 90 degrees Celsius to 2,000 degrees Celsius. So I drew a couple ice cubes here, icicles, and made a couple flames um, on my 2,000 degrees. So that is extremely hot. Okay, that is what they need the heat shields on space shuttles on, you know, and things like that that are entering the atmosphere. That's why people think that uh, the asteroids and meteors burn up as they enter our atmosphere is because of that temperature. Um, that's what a lot of people thought. But anyways, it is the thickest layer of the atmosphere. It's not very dense. Um, it's very thin, really, um, density-wise, but only it's the thickest as in height. Okay, it's about 250 miles from the bottom to the top of the th thermosphere. Okay, this is the layer that the uh, northern lights or the aurora borealis um, can be seen. They're called in the southern hemisphere aurora australis. Um, but those are the northern lights. They're kind of glowing green, pinks, reds. Um, all sorts of different colors, even some, I think they have some blues in them also. But different gases when the magnetic field from the sun interacts with the magnetic field of the earth and does something with the different particles that are in those layers of the atmosphere, um, they change different colors and create all those color um, colors that you do see. If you've never seen them, they do happen around here. You can definitely see them around here. Um, and they aren't always exactly right towards the north, but they usually are in that relative direction. Okay, Usually once a year um, I see them. Now, last thing that I want to tell you is we have these things called pauses. Okay, There's the tropopause, there's the um, mesopause, the stratopause. Okay, Now these pauses are nothing more than, like for example, they're, they're not a layer. They're boundaries between these layers. Now, it's just like being in water. Either you're in the water or you're in the air. You're not like in between. I mean, yeah, you could have your head sideways and one eye is in the water and one eye is in the air, but that's there's no really exact, exact line, okay? Um, I mean, there is an exact line. That's why we call it a boundary, and that's why these pauses are not layers because there is no area that is a pause. It's just where the it changes from one layer of the atmosphere to the next layer of the atmosphere. Now, this uh, next picture that I'm going to show you here, this comes straight out of your reference table. Okay, So if you want to refer to this in your reference table also, you do need to draw this, Okay, but you also need to understand it's in the reference table. There are three separate sections here. One is a temperature section. You start out at zero degrees um, Celsius. Well, I just told you we start out at about 15 degrees Celsius. Okay, and what happens is your temperature in the troposphere drops. Okay, I want you to look over here what happens to the pressure in the troposphere. The top of the troposphere, that's a tropopause, not a layer, just a boundary. Okay, the pressure drops as you go up in the troposphere. So as you climb a mountain, your temperature is going to get cooler and your pressure is going to get cooler. Now, over here is the water vapor. Well, the water vapor also drops because most of our clouds, um, that's where all of our clouds are, is in the lower part of the atmosphere. Yep, we get some bigger storms, and I told you they can spike up into the stratosphere a little bit. Okay? Now, you go up into the stratosphere, and the temperature increases, but the temperature only increases to about zero degrees. Okay, as you can see right there. The pressure continues to drop to almost nothing, but there is some pressure. Okay, and pretty much our water vapor just kind of fizzles out part way into the stratosphere. Not much really makes it up too far up into the stratosphere. Now then when you go up into the mesosphere, as we keep going up in altitude, the temperature decreases in the mesosphere. Okay, and it drops down to negative 90 degrees like you put in your notes already. Okay, and pressure still maintains very, very low, low pressure. No more water vapor over here. Okay, and then in the thermosphere, as you go up into the thermosphere, the temperature skyrockets up to roughly around 2,000 degrees Celsius. Okay, 
and there is very very little pressure up there um, and there's no water vapor to say um, up in that area okay so make sure you have these notes get these done and um, show them to your teacher during class